Barry Sullivan in... The Unexpected. Yeah, it was hot, all right. Even the streets were sweating. Dames were going to work in as little as they thought they could get away with. Kids were spending the whole days under the fire hydrants. And every time you try to breathe, it burns your lungs out. Sure, I knew the heat was on, but I didn't think it meant I was going to fry. Not until I ran into the unexpected. The unexpected. A secret future, a hidden destiny waiting for you. Where? When? Who knows? Tomorrow, today, an hour from now, perhaps in just a moment, you too will meet... The Unexpected. Before our story, here's a word from our announcer. And now, the popular motion picture radio and stage star, Barry Sullivan, in Heat Wave. A drama of the unexpected. I've been pacing up and down for hours. Three steps one way, three the other. This was a great little place to cool off in. Dark, up five stories, and only 110 degrees hot. But for me, that was good, even in a heat wave. Because what cop would make his way up past five flights of cool, refrigerated furs to look in the garret for Whitey Malone? The hottest guy in town. That knock nearly jumped me out of my skin, but it was too hot to move that fast. So I pulled out my gun and opened the door, slow and easy-like. What do you want? Hello, Whitey. How you doing? Oh, it's you. Now, come on in. I don't know how I'm doing. It's so hot, I can't think. I gotta get out of here, Spike. This heat's driving me nuts. Oh, sure, Whitey. Take it easy. It's no cooler down in the street. There ain't been a breeze for two days. How much longer have I got to sit in this attic like a rat in a hole? Oh, that's what I come to see you about, Whitey. You got to change your hideout. The cops are wise. What? What are you talking about? Let go of me, Whitey. Let, let go. Get it out. I, I just come up to warn you, Whitey. Someone tipped off the cops. Yeah? How much did they give you? Honest, Whitey. It wasn't me. Who else? I, I didn't squeal. I, I wouldn't be here if I had. I, I didn't squeal. You're the only one who knew about this joint. Mm. No, not the only one, Whitey. What? What do you mean? Well, you told me to tell her, Whitey. I, I just followed your orders. You told me to tell Why, her. Why, you lying little... Uh, I'm not lying, Whitey. I just come here as your friend. I, I swear I'm not lying to you, Whitey. I okay, swear... Okay, okay. Give me the story, and it better tell straight. I, I went to Inez yesterday. All I done was tell her where you are and how to get here. Just like you said to do, Whitey. Yeah, what'd she say? Nothing. Nothing at all. Nothing? I, I thought everything was all right. I figured she'd be out to see you last night, but this morning it's all over town. What is? The whole deal. That you've done it and where you're hiding. Yeah? Yeah, Mother Flanagan told me it was Inez who squealed. Yes, Everybody's uh... talking about it. I was sticking my own neck in the noose when I come up here. you got to believe me, Whitey. It's the truth. Honest it is. Okay, Spike. I believe you. Then you, you're going to get out of town, Whitey? Not just yet, Spike. I got some business to take care of. Oh, you ain't got time for no business, Whitey. I got time for this. It won't wait. I know what you're thinking, Whitey, but it won't wait. It's crazy. I don't care if they catch me, Spike. Not anymore. Life's no good unless you can trust somebody. Oh, you can trust me, Whitey. Maybe, and I'm going to fix it so I can trust Inez, too. Oh, you can't do that. You won't get away with it, Whitey. You'll never double-cross anyone again. Get that, Spike. I'm going to take care of Inez. I flipped open a barrel of my revolver, jammed the bullets into it hard. Like I was pushing him into the soft white flesh of Inez's throat. One, two, three. Hey, Spike, look at this one. It's shiny like gold. It looked good on Inez. He always did go for cheap jewelry. Oh, listen, why do you nuts? The heat's on plenty already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One hundred and ten. There's a thermometer on the wall. But you know what, Spike? I don't feel any hotter than when it was a hundred and five. Come on, kid, give your nose. Oh, why do you wait a minute? Hey, what? I opened the door and started down the stairwell. A wave of heat came up and slapped me right in the kisser. But I shoved it back to the first storage vaults and told it to cool off. And I clattered on down the five flights of stairs. Uh, 
Out in the street, everybody was in a hurry. Getting hotter by scrambling to get out of the heat. The only people who weren't in any rush were a bunch of grubby kids with their snouts pressed up against the window of an ice cream store. They weren't paying any attention to me either, so I took a chance and joined the crowd. I wasn't exactly sure where to start looking for Inez. But if she was as scared as I thought she'd be, she was probably out somewhere drinking it off. As for me, I needed something long and cool before I burned up with hate. So I took a roundabout way to a dark little hole in the wall with a rose-colored neon sign that kept blinking on and off. Mother's place. Mother's place. Mother's place. Okay, mister. What'll it be? Hiya, Mother. Give me a beer, huh? What are you doing here, Whitey? Don't you know you're hot? Sure, everybody's hot today. (laughs) Go on, get out of here, Whitey. I don't want no trouble. The cops are on your tail, and I don't want no shooting in my joint. I'm looking for Inez. Have you seen her? No. No, I haven't seen her. She ain't been in all day. Maybe she's gone out of town or something. She has. I'll find her. No matter where she is, I'll find her. Now, take it easy, Whitey. Don't do nothing to Inez. It'll go harder on you if you do. Couldn't go much harder one way or the other, could it, Mother dear? I figured I wasn't very welcome at Mother Flanagan's home, sweet home. So I left the nice, cool beer smell behind and plunged out into the furnace called Main Street. It was getting dark, but the heat only changed color. It was just as heavy as ever. I wandered down the street toward the big, fancy apartment building where Inez lived. She might be in, she might not, but I could wait. That was one thing I'd learned up in that attic, to wait. I was round on the corner and looking up at the windows, trying to see if there was any light in them, when I heard something I didn't like so much. I didn't want to run into no cops. They made me hot under the collar, and I wanted to stay nice and cool and ready for Inez. So I ducked back into an alley and grabbed myself a piece of lost time. In an hour or maybe two, they'd get tired and go away, singing the blues on their sirens. I could wait. Yeah, but they didn't leave. Not in one hour or two or even three. And the gun butt was burning blisters on my hand and I was getting impatient. Hey, Whitey, Whitey. Yeah, who is it? What do you want? Put your gun away, Whitey. It's me. It's Spike, me. Oh, well, what is it? Listen, you gotta get out of here. You can't go over to Inez's now. There are cops all around our apartment house. Is Inez home? Gee, I don't know, Whitey. I'll I... find out if Inez is home. I'm tired of waiting. I'm gonna pay her a visit right now. Left him standing there and started for the apartment. By the time I reached the edge of the alley, I knew I was running, so I slowed down to a walk. I shoved my hat on the back of my head and strolled casually past the cop at the front door. I flashed him a phony press card. Martin, morning Chronicle. Anything doing? He just shook his head and mopped his forehead with a big blue handkerchief. And I took the elevator to the fourth floor. I got there, the hall was empty. I walked slowly up to Inez's door. I started to knock, but then I stopped and listened. Inside her apartment, I could hear Inez talking on the phone. She was gabbing away just like that. I'd sure like to drop over, but I'm, I'm kind of tired tonight. I think I'll go to bed. Hey, I gotta hang up now. Someone's at the door. No, nah, I wasn't expecting nobody. We're so long, Emma. See you tomorrow. Just a minute. Just a minute. I'm coming. What? What? Officer, what do you want? Just checking up to see that you're all right, miss. Oh. They... They haven't caught him yet. No, but we will. Don't worry. You can go on to bed now. You got nothing to worry about. Yeah. I'd been all set to go in after her when I'd heard that cop coming up the steps. I ducked into the shadows and hoped he wouldn't see me. <laughs> he must have been nearsighted. He didn't. Now he waltzed right past me again, humming to himself. A big, lugless tone deaf, too. I let the minutes creep past. Ten, fifteen, twenty. The copper didn't come back. The gun was getting heavy in my hand, and I knew that Inez didn't have much longer to live. She'd locked the door. But it would have taken more than locks to keep me out. I gave her the first try. 
I held the gun out at arm's length. All right, Inez. Don't move from that bed. It's too late to move, you dirty, rotten, double-crossing little... You think the story is over, don't you? But wait. Wait for... The Unexpected. But now, here again is our announcer. And now for the surprising conclusion to Heat Wave, a drama of the unexpected. Hello, Lieutenant. This is Officer Blaine. Yeah, we got Whitey Malone, all right. Running down the hall. I know we should have stopped him before he got up there, but he slipped past us somehow. Whitey's nobody's fool, you know. What? Inez? Oh, is that her name? No, she's all right. A little scared, that's all. He pumped six bullets into her bed. That's enough to scare anybody. What? No, she wasn't in the bed. She was sleeping out on the fire escape. We're having a heat wave, remember? Heat Wave, a drama of the unexpected, starred Barry Sullivan and featured Alice Drake and Ed Rand. It was produced by Alvin C. Gersonson, written by Robert Libet and Frank Burt, and directed by Frank K. Danzig. And now, this is Hal Sawyer, inviting you to listen again soon, when another of your favorite motion picture stars meets... The Unexpected. The Unexpected is a Hamilton Whitney production, transcribed in Hollywood.